So, I'm Adam Blaze. I'm going to do an acrylic pour for you guys today. Uh, I'm working with a 12 by 16 canvas, I believe. Um, you can choose to prep them with gesso if you want, uh, or just leave them as is. It depends on your pouring mediums and how much you want the paints to run. I'm going to do a quick one, uh, run through of uh, what supplies you're going to need if you want to do a similar project to this yourself. So, I've got a simple sponge brush over here. If you want to apply your gesso or your primer, these are the best to use to get a nice even coat. Um, I'm going to be using the paintbrush just to stir my paints today. You won't be doing any like brush work at all. Um, you can use whatever kind of solo cups you want. I would say the clear ones might work better for your mixing volumes, but I just had red ones available at hand today. Um, need some sort of like a wire grate or some sort of mechanism to lay your canvas across when you're doing your pour over a basin of some sort. Uh, I'm doing mine over a sink with hot water in it. You can use uh, Rubbermaid containers or anything if you'd like. Um, I've got a spread of acrylic paints here today. I'm going to finish up what I have left of my deco art stuff that's from the dollar store. Just quick, cheap pickup paint. I've got a couple better series paints here as well that I'll be blending. I've already got my mix of water and pouring medium here. You can figure out your own comfortability as far as how much medium you want to use uh, for different viscosities of the paint. You'll get a different run from that. Um, you're going to get different responses as well. The thicker your paints, the less muddying you'll have. Some of my paints are of lesser quality, so there might be some muddying on some of these pores today, but we'll see what we can do. So I'm gonna start mixing like my black right now. You don't need a whole lot of this one or you will get a lot of muddying. So when it comes to the viscosity of the paint, you'll see that this is going to drip and kind of stretch a little bit on the drip. It doesn't just drip right off. You want it to be about that thick for a pouring medium. Uh, when it comes to your black, you can go a little thicker on it if you want. That way you get less muddying. And like I said, you're using very minimal black as it is anyways. Or you will get a lot of issues with your colors coming through. So we're going to mix a red now. This is a bright red. Again, you can get better paints than these if you'd like. This was just a quick pickup. I'm using the rest of the old supplies. When you're mixing with your medium, you want to make sure you get a good even mix. You'll see that the medium won't show anymore. You can put a lot of bubbles into it if you want. The more air bubbles you put into it, you can actually end up bringing out in the paint to create cells, which I'm going to show you how to do later with a blowtorch. So again, thickness. Got a lot of stretch, this one's even a little bit thicker. Let's put where we want it. The good thing about this technique, too, is like there are no wrong answers or no wrong methods, really. It's basically just controlled chaos. So, don't think you've done anything wrong if you've poured and they're too viscous. And you can always pour on top paints you've done anyways. So if you notice any chunks in your paint or any pieces that have been you know sitting in the container or sediment make sure you really blend those out or they will show through on your paint. They'll add texture that you may not want. Again with acrylic pour there are no really wrong answers so sometimes if you uh, if you get a textured piece it, it can look alright but you can always pour over top it again if you want to get rid of it. I think these are the same tones. Again, when it comes to mixing paint, there aren't really any wrong answers as well. You're just going to get a little bit of a different color if they don't blend perfectly. But that can be part of the fun of it. So this is a better quality paint. I'm using Wallach Student. And this stuff's going to work well. Again, you can kind of add it as you go. See how it thickens up. You kind of want it to be the thickness of like a cream. Again, it's got that little bit of a stretch when it drips. 
that's going to be the same viscosity as our other ones. And that's about the same viscosity as our other ones. Making sure that your paints are the same viscosity is important, or you will get some colors that will muddy or run more than others, and that's going to really change the actual outcome of your project. I'll add this green now. It's kind of funny. I always think I'm using too much paint. I think I'm going to mix it a little more just to get it to that yeah. consistency we want. That way when you're getting the shot it's like yep. as it should be. Because they're going to focus on this one shot and be like, oh that looked like it was thin. <laughs> I should be making thin paints and then they're gonna have the same problem I've been having every other time I do this my paints are just a little too thin but you also want them to be a little a little thin it's it's a fine line because you want it to run but you want it not to muddy your other colors so it's about getting that blend where you are gonna have the ability to get your paint to run properly but you're not gonna have the inability to see every color on its own and that's like basically your worst nightmare because then you're you're using all this time and material and you're not going to get a result that you're after it'll still turn you'll still get a result that you may enjoy uh, nonetheless but sometimes if it's not the uh, the end goal to begin with it's not as uh, rewarding I want to get the silica gel too if you get silica gel mm -hmm. you can uh, add cells into your painting more as well if you uh, if you get the silica you can there we go and again, too, this is all like guesswork because we could mix our colors to this viscosity and end up with something entirely different than what I have in mind. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens. Apparently, they overfill your white when you buy it, though. It was the only one full, like right to the top. They're like, you know, white's not very expensive to make. We'll go ahead and give you a whole bunch more of it. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like that was the only one that had that much in it. Looks like a heavy whipped cream. I want to mix the white. Oh, some green got in there. A little bit of green got into my white, but that's not going to affect it too bad. I'm going to mix the white a little heavier, it seems. Because it's going to carry a lot of my colors anyways, so it might be able to help. I might have to add some water, it seems. Oh, yeah. It's like too thick. Another thing too is you don't want to end up chasing too much so you don't want to end up going too thin and then too thick and then too thin and then too thick. Kind of like I, I'm about to do. Because <laughs> it seems we got way too much white. So it's more of a run rather than a drip. I'm going to use nature's pouring medium and that's water. Never hurts to add a little bit of water. These are water based acrylics so they will blend all right and that'll bring us down a little more towards what we want to be at but that's to the viscosity we want there now finally <clears throat> okay serious face cat you're ruining the shot would you like to how do you uh wh what we're doing this video here what do you want i see no cats were harmed in the filming of this video um so yeah, um, one thing that's really important when you're putting away any of your products, when it comes to these especially, make sure you're always cleaning the threads of both your cap and the bottle. The last thing you want is a seal being formed. Sometimes they're really hard to get off and then you get like uh, chunks or flakes inside your materials you're using to paint with. So to do a contrast right now, I'm going to go ahead and apply a thin layer of gesso. I'm, I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. Um, again, this is a Wallex brand. Um, this is a primer for your canvas, so it's oil and acrylic. Um, it's going to help with the actual flow of your paints when you pour them. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour some generously in the middle and kind of paint it out from there. 
let's see how that goes. Again, this is where the sponge brush is handy because you can kind of just like saturate it, you can spread it around, and you get that thin layer that you want to spread out. You don't really want any lines showing up in your pour, um, so the best is to get this as thin as you can. And you're going to want to pour on it when it's still wet before it dries. It will actually help with the flow of your paints, and that's the whole point of this. If you let the primer dry, it's not going to help anything really. Um, it will help take away some of the texture of the canvas itself, but again, that's not what we're really after. The pour is going to cover most of that. This is just to help with the, uh, the flow of things. So again, nothing crazy, not too thick. It's basically just wetting the canvas. But it's important you get like a decent even layer. You don't want any dry spots to catch certain amounts of paint. That will affect your overall image and the ability to pour and control once we get the acrylic onto the canvas itself. Use a little bit more. Let's get this last corner done. Again, make sure that everything's nice and even. Any lines or ridges could show through. If you pour too little acrylic in some spots, you might you might see that happen. So that looks pretty good there. Could probably stand to get rid of that cat hair. <laughs> so there, that one's primed. You can see slight grain to it, but no worse than the canvas and like I said this is just going to help our paint flow anyways. You're going to want to mix your colors in a single cup. Basing with white will start. There are no colors in the cup that I'm mixing in obviously. And you're going to want to layer it. Again, use very little black. Very little. That's just going to add some definition and you don't want it to muddy. This one I'm going to go with green. Okay. And then I'm going to add some red. Pouring right into the center. The splatter isn't too bad, but try to pour in the center the most you can. I'm going to add some fluorescent pink. Again, you don't have to be too careful with your measurements. I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow because it's just going to give you different colors if you're not paying attention to the measurements. So we've got our blend there. Might add a little bit of blue. Again, we've got to make sure that we're going to cover that whole canvas. And we'll add a little more of this red. So as you can see in the cup, we've got a pretty cool tie-dye looking effect. That doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get that on the canvas, but it's looking promising. So I've taken the canvas and placed it on top of the cup and flipped it over. Your colors are now settling. You don't want to let them settle too much or they will blend a whole bunch. So we'll probably leave it another 10 seconds and then I'm going to pull it off and see what we can get out of the pour. If we don't have enough paint in here to cover the full canvas, I can do controlled pores, uh, dirty pores in either corner or on either side. We'll see what we get. So that corner, I'm going to do a controlled pour there just to kind of save what we have. So now I can do a quick little blend if I want. Nothing too extreme, just some of those bright colors. We can save that corner.
is any of the colors that I've put more air bubbles into. Applying the torch to the surface will bring those colors out and will create cells. So that's our finished product. This was a two pour canvas. Our initial pour taking up majority of the canvas. Second pour being a controlled pour with a circular pattern here. That looks awesome. And it's got like a cotton candy rainbow thing going on. It's got some sort of like, it's planetary too. It's got like a galaxy thing, you know? We've got some, some planet. I'm liking this one a lot.